Archaon, the Everchosen, is the self-proclaimed champion of all the Chaos Gods. That does not deter Kairos Fate Weaver from trying to beguile the Lord of the End Times. Ever spinning webs of trickeries and lies, the demonic forces of Zinch seek to bend their foe to their own devious will. Will the host of the Ever Chosen fall prey to the great oracles and machinations? Or will Archaon's ruthless determination prove too strong for him to be led astray? Hello and welcome to Season of War! Today we have another exciting Age of Sigmar 3.0 matchup. Uh, Zach, you're back for your first game of 3.0. Yeah, I haven't played any of it yet, so um, I'll try to do my best to remember all of the new rules. And actually, a fact just dropped today as well, yes. which changed a few things. Um, yeah. So it will be a very fun time, and I'm yeah. looking forward to it. A bit of an adjustment, obviously, with all the new changes and whatnot. Uh, and speaking of new changes, we are in a new setup, new location for the first time where we're filming. Uh, so you've probably already noticed there's a few different things like we're sitting down. That's because our table's not on legs yet. <laughs> um, so we're just obviously still working through the change, literally just getting set up in here this morning. Mm -hmm. um, so again, apologies there, but you know we'll continue to uh, improve and make this set better, even better than it was before. Uh, so obviously super excited for that and appreciate your guys' patience. But just before we get into things, this was a matchup chosen by our premium members. So uh, you're bringing your slaves to darkness and they chose for me to play Zinch. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my first time playing Zinch as well. So another new thing today. <laughs> and just while we're talking about premium members, um, we did also recently hit our next membership or last membership goal uh, to unlock a specialty battle report each month. So this mm -hmm. is uh, one extra battle report on top of whatever number we're doing. And uh, it's a way to do something that's a little different format. So our premium members have already voted on what we're going to do for July. Uh, so this is anything from like, you know, teams and doubles events or, or games to triumph and tre treachery or, you know, 3000 point games or war cry or different things like that. So just fun way to mix it up and get, you know, a little more variety, get some different, um, I guess kind of battles on the channel. Excited for that. So we just hit that goal. And our next goal is our big one to, um, double our content output in terms of doing an extra battle report every week for premium members. We're currently doing one every month, uh, but that goes up to, you know, one a week, so four a month. So uh, premium members obviously are getting double the content. So if you are interested in seeing more games, uh, getting more content, you know, consider supporting us through the premium membership. It really is what makes all of this possible uh, and continuing to make improvements and uh, have Cass, my wife, do the narration. Uh, she charges a lot, so that's real costly. <laughs> it really does you know, go a long way in terms of making it all possible. Um, with this new setup, I already know we're going to be having to buy new lenses to adjust things. Is, so there's a ton of expenses at all times. So really appreciate any support we're getting through that. Otherwise, this is a printable scenery table as you know, typical. So if you want to check out any of their products, uh, hit the link in the description. We are an affiliate with them now. So just bear that in mind. You not only are obviously supporting their small business, but supporting our channel as well when you do purchase stuff through them and using our link. But anyways, on to today's game. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. We are playing the mission power struggle for the first time. Mm -hmm. So. So this is a similar layout uh, to what focal points used to be in terms of just the five objectives. Um, but a few notable changes here. Uh, the storing is the typical for the new GHB of store one, store two, store more, or hold one, hold two, hold more. So one point if you hold one objective, two points if you hold two or more. If you hold more than your opponent, you get a third point. Mm -hmm. And then you also get two points for your battle tactic each turn. So obviously those are always very important. Our first, you know, two of our first games have been decided by the battle tactics. Uh, so very influential. And then for scoring, you also only score uh, any of the objectives on the second turn you've held them. So it means you really have to kind of be tanky and get onto the objectives and be able to hold mm -hmm. them to some, at least to deny your opponent. And then, as always, we are playing in the realm of Gur uh, with new GHB. So turn three is the big one to remember of being able to burn one of the objectives if you go second in the battle round. So obviously, we'll remember that one this time <laughs> and see if it has an impact. But getting into the game, Zach, do you want to take us through your army list? Yeah, so um, I am running a host of the Ever Chosen list. Uh, so that's my sub-allegiance in Slaves to Darkness. For better or for worse, can only take the 
core rule artifacts because there is no artifacts yeah. in Host of the Ever Chosen. Uh, speaking of which, I'm running six circle for that. Cool. Uh, so I'll be on my Varengard here, my one unit of three. Uh, so that's when they charge, they do an additional damage. Nice. Um, and so besides that, uh, those heroes and Varengard mentioned, I also have a Sorcerer Lord there. Uh, a group of Chaos Warriors, and another unit of five knights over here. Awesome. Archeon has the plus one damage spell for his weapon from the core rules. Uh, my Chaos Sorcerer Lord has Mask of Darkness, um, and then, so that's the teleport spell, and then my Chaos, or my, Ma my Chaos Sorcerer Lord on Manticore okay. has uh, the Whispers of Chaos. Cool. So that's, I pick a unit within 12, I roll uh, 1d6 for each model in that unit, and if I slay a unit with one of those mortal wounds on a six, uh, then that unit cannot move at all. So nice. it can't move, yeah. pile in, any anything like that. So a useful spell, um, sure. but needs to get your wizard up close and personal. Yeah. So luckily he is on a... He's a little tanky. He's, so. he's a little tanky and he has a few wounds now. And he's also not a slouch in combat. Yeah, so. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's my list for today. Uh, and then my grand strategy was uh, protect all my wizards, so have at least one live to the end of the game. And yeah. I have three wizards, that's my Sork Lord, Archaeon, and my Chaos Lord on Manticore. So pretty awesome. tough to get all three of them down, I think. Yeah. So I think that was a good choice for them. Um, and then I have the Warlord Battalion, so that lets me bring an extra enhancement, uh, as well as an extra command point into the hero phase of my that's choosing. Awesome. Awesome. Well, for me today, I'm running a Turtle Confederation. Not too much of a departure from the AOS 2 version of this list. A uh, couple notable changes. I dropped one of the Exalted Flamers. I dropped a unit of 10 Brimstone Horrors and upgraded the Lord of Change uh, to Kairos, obviously the named one. He gets the once per game change one die roll. So obviously that's going to be a fun one to, to you mm -hmm. know. Uh, interact with and have uh, at my disposal. But otherwise, I do have two units of 10 Paint Horrors, two units of six Flamers, and the Exalted Flamer, the Fate Master, and Kairos, as I mentioned. And then for my grand strategy here, I didn't have great options, I actually feel like, in this list, uh, but I did choose Hold the Line, uh, which is to have a battle line unit survive to the end of the game. It is interesting with the Paint Horrors whether or not they maintain their battle line status when all the paints are dead. Um, but being that it's a battle line unit in your starting army, the unit has the battle line, you know, keyword at the start. So we're ruling it as they would maintain that battle line. So, you know, if one, hopefully, you know, one of those horrors survive um, and that would maintain that for me, but that could be clarified in the future. It wasn't in the FAQ, so who knows? <laughs> but then for battalions, I have one single battalion, which is the battle regiment, put in everything in a one drop. Um, obviously really good for me here. Losing change host, I'm still one drop with Zinch, so I you know got to choose who or death to choose who will go first and whatnot. But it did mean I had to set up all my stuff at, mm -hmm. at once so you know where obviously how I'm deployed before you even get started. Well, otherwise, I think we are ready to start it. As I said, I do have choice here. I'm mm -hmm. gonna give you the turn. I don't mm -hmm. think it's any surprise. Um, no. So you're gonna get to choose your battle tactics and then we'll jump into some heroic actions. Yes, I will choose ferocious advance. So okay. that's and three units within three inches of each other after a run. Nice, that's yeah, a good one to start off with. And for heroic actions, I will do heroic leadership. Yep. So uh, four up CP, it would be two up, but obviously my general's still alive and I'll be from my chaos lord here. Cool. Uh, so no. I don't get it. And I'm gonna do the same thing, heroic leadership with my fate master. Uh, also not getting it. This one was clarified in one of our previous battle reports that it's not a generic extra CP for the army, but a, a command point that that hero specifically can spend. So we do have to, you know, call out which one's using it. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, neither of us got it anyway. So we'll just be jumping into Slaves to the Darkness, turn one. Yes, sir. Getting right into the hero phase, Archaon fails to cast Flaming Weapon, but does cast Mystic Shield on himself. The Sorcerer Lord casts Demonic Power, but is unbound. The Sorcerer Lord on Manticore opts to not cast a spell to avoid generating extra fate points for Zinch needlessly. The two Sorcerer Lords use Oracular Visions on the Varengard and Archaon. Looking to claim ground, the Slaves to Darkness push across the battlefield and Archaon looks to charge into the Zinch forces. 
However, Cairo's Fate Weaver causes Archaeon to fail his charge using Oracle of Eternity. The Slaves to Darkness forces have claimed three objectives, but do not score them yet, though they did achieve their battle tactics scoring two points. Slaves to Darkness, turn one. Um, pushed almost everything up except for this block of knights here. Um, I, I realized a little bit late that I had more than enough spells over here because I wanted to cast Mystic Shield with my mm -hmm. Chaos Source Lord of Manticore onto Arky, but I just realized all my offensive spells I couldn't even hit at that point. Moved all my stuff over here, which was the original plan, but it would have been a little bit more up. Yeah. But besides that, um, I gained hold of the center objective there, which is great. And then also because of the new AOS 3 rolls, or at least yeah. new to me, um, you get all objectives at the start. You control of the them in deployment, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was able to move away um, yeah. while still hold it. Um, and then I was gonna do a huge charge roll into yeah. <laughs> those brims and start uh, wiping out flamers immediately. But of course, uh, Kairos has yeah. his change one die in the game. Uh, so I rolled an eight to my charge and Jordan changed that into a four. Yep. So I, I failed my charge and that can't be modified any further. So even though uh, I'm Slanesh marked, so I re-roll run and charge rolls, I cannot re-roll yeah. that. Um, so can't re-roll after that. We were talking about in deployment where what I wanted to do there, whether I just sat for enough, far enough back, but obviously hoping I didn't have to use that and you would fail your charge, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you didn't yet, but it, it makes me use it, but it does, you know, Keep me safe. Exactly, exactly. Um, and also, I am a little bit more spooked in general just because I don't have my reroll saves anymore. Yes. It's, it's something yep. that was so reliable that I could... Um, just do anything with Archeon. Yeah, I could just it, basically throw them into anything. So I'm glad that they changed that because that would be a little bit ridiculous, yeah. but it does make me worry a little bit more for Arky, even though he's still insanely tanky. Yeah, very good. So I guess we'll see uh, at some point in this game how much damage we can do to him or we ignore him. Yep. Yeah, and uh, sorry, going back to the objectives, no points scored, obviously, yeah. just because I need to hold it for two consecutive turns. So even though I control these three, I do not score any yeah. points this turn. And yeah. I did also get my battle tactic yep. for the game, which is run three units within three regions of each other. And you had chosen those there. three. Yeah, yeah those so. three, uh, hanging out in that cool little group there. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, that uh, that is my turn. So basically, Archeon's trying to take one flank and the rest of your army's trying to take the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, him supported yeah. with his little two <laughs> two mortal goon squads. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the plan. Awesome, well, just before we jump into Zinch turn one, uh, heroic actions. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna do heroic leadership with my Fate Master again. Uh, yeah, I will do the same. I with, do not get it. Uh, yeah. My Chaos Lord there. Cool. Uh, I get a one, so okay. I do not get it Neither either. of us. Uh, so we not do get very... one you know, extra command points for our generals, though. Yep. And then for my battle tactic this round, I'm choosing Monstrous Takeover, so I have to have one of my monsters. Uh, this guy, I'm going to say contesting this objective and controlling it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I just move him on there. Uh, it does put him danger close to Archeon, but it's not like I can really get away uh, too quickly anyways. So otherwise, we can just jump into Zinch turn one. Mm -hmm. For their turn, the Zinch army chooses Mass Conjuration for their agenda. Starting the hero phase, the Fate Master uses the command ability Lord of Fate. Kairos uses two Destiny dice to cast Gift of Change, which is ignored by Arcane. He then casts Mystic Shield on the Pink Horrors and Arcane Bolt. Both units of Pink Horrors cast Channeling Pink Fire, though one unit is unbound. The first unit of Flamers use all at attack and deals three wounds to Archaon. The Exalted Flamer deals no damage, and the second unit of Flamers use Inspired Triumph but only deal another three damage. 
ending their turn, the Zinch forces keep the game tied by scoring their battle tactic. All right, so Zinch turn one, um, not obviously quite what I was looking for. Uh, I knew I had a good chance to do a ton of damage to Arteon. Again, relying on you on rolling ones, but I have so many shots. Yeah. Uh, so here I was really hoping to get more through, but I actually, again, dice being dice, I was rolling all the ones. Yeah. Um, but I did get six damage on him, so. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. starting to bracket him and obviously the hope was to get the double to finish him off. Now I'm a lot more reliant on that. Uh, I, I mean, if I get the double and I shoot into him again, I probably am, am not killing him. Um, but doing the best I can, trying to zone him out. He will go, have to go into the uh, Brimstone Horrors with his first mm -hmm. round of attacks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, here, if you want to come into this stuff, which <laughs> obviously is probably the play. And now I should have actually sat further back with all this stuff in hindsight. I could have sat further than six inches, and that would mean you're not piling in to anything on the second mm -hmm. pile in. Uh, so that's already a little slip up on my end. Um, but hopefully priority will go my way and I'll kill it, <laughs> kill him. Uh, otherwise, though, I did store my battle tactic for monstrous takeover. Again, having a monster and within three of the objective. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it. I did also achieve my like Zinchian agenda for two uh, casts over nine. So the Lord of Change will get plus one, to, or sorry, Kairos will get plus one to cast nice. from here on out. Nice. Uh, and yeah, jumping into priority. That is... Caught for me. I got a two, yeah. so odds are in your favor. That's a four. You got it. Um, so obviously in this case, I really need to get him down, um, try and finish him off before healing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot to ask. And for my uh, battle tactic for this round, I am going to choose Slay the Warlord here. So again, I didn't get quite as much damage as, as I was hoping to turn one on Archeon, but um, you know, hopefully the dice average out and I can get, get those other 14. Um, but so I will we'll take Slay the Warlord, hoping to get that here. Obviously, I think it's bad news if I don't. But mm -hmm. um, heroic actions, I will just do uh, heroic leadership um, with my Fate Master, mm -hmm. trying to get the extra CP. I fail it again. Uh, so um, if... Yeah, and I'll try to do heroic recovery with Arky. Uh, okay. So his base bravery is 10, yep. but he has an aura of plus two to bravery characteristic. Nice. So as long as I don't roll uh, uh, 12, double sixes, yeah. he'll heal D3. Cool. He almost got one six, uh, nice. so he'll heal D3. For three. Nice. So I'll bring him up to 17. Wins. Not what I want to see. No, no, that is not bueno for the opposing side, but awesome yeah. for me. Yep. And with that, we will jump into Zinch turn two. This turn, the Zinch forces choose Reckless Abandon for their agenda. At the start of the hero phase, the Fate Master uses the command ability Lord of Fate. Cairo starts the casting with Gift of Change, which is again ignored by Archaon. The two units of Pink Horrors successfully cast Channeling Pink Fire. Kairos then cast Mystic Shield on the Pink Horrors and Arcane Bolt. At the end of the movement phase, the Zinch army spends their fate points to summon a unit of blue horrors. Into shooting, the first unit of flamers start things off strong, dealing seven wounds to Archaon. It quickly went downhill though, as the second unit of flamers and exalted flamer both fail to deal a single wound. The unit of Pink Horrors end their shooting phase by killing two Chaos Warriors. In charging, the Pink Horrors use two Destiny Dice to guarantee their charge, avoiding the Sorcerer Lord but just tagging the Varen Guard. The Horrors deal no damage in combat, but also take no damage in return from the Chaos Warriors.
the Varengard Pylon and deal six wounds to the horrors. Using Relentless Killers, the Varen Guard fight again, this time dealing 18 wounds. With 24 casualties, the Horrors lose another 19 to Battleshock, leaving only one remaining. Being their second turn, the Zinch army now scores two points for the objectives, but have failed their battle tactic for the turn. All right, so Zinch turn two. Uh, probably not surprising that it didn't do what I hoped to do. Over here, obviously Archeon's still alive. I did get seven wounds on him with the first unit, but then nothing else with the rest of them. Another. The second unit matched and then a couple, you know, <laughs> wounds here, there, and I've and, uh, been trying to do some spell casting too to take him down, but because uh, uh, six damage, even though you have the mortal wound mm -hmm. ignore as well, but the, you know, spell ignore has been. Yeah, even on average, that extra three would be. Exactly, good, right? exactly. So, yeah, that's tough, especially potentially healing, you know, another three every turn. I knew coming into this that I had a decent shot to kill Archeon over two turns, but. Uh, Zach, you were just saying even with with like the two up save, relying on ones obviously like numbers wise averages. Sure, if you get average, it works, but it's so swingy yeah. expecting that. So, so here it's really showcasing you know the idea of just ignore the big model and kill everything else. But maybe I wasn't in position to that to do that, or I could have obviously positioned better to do that. I th I think it was hard for you also, um, just because. You had to deploy first, so I saw where Alba yeah. was going, so I could send Archeon into kind of that center otherwise. So Yeah. But here I'm effectively zoning him out here. Mm -hmm. I could have done the same thing here and been focusing all my shooting over here. That's probably would have been the play. You know, taking out the Varen Guard, because they actually, as we saw, you know, smacked way harder than I expected. You know, with Battle Shock and everything, I have one model left because I, you know, the only the paints have the command models, so I couldn't use the inspiring presence. Uh, so that was, you know, with the double pile in, um, yeah. they were able to get in and do, again, so much damage. So really probably the play here would have been at least this turn or, you know, even last turn, moving more centrally, trying to zone here and just screen off RK on for turn after turn and, you know, try and kill everything else. But it's uh, put me in a tough spot. You know, I lost a unit of horrors, which isn't the end of the world, but... Obviously, running scared and especially having taken the double, it's potential for you to get the double. And otherwise, I do store uh, one point for each of my objectives, give me two for the round. I failed my battle tactic, though, obviously, to mm -hmm. slay the warlord. So I only store two this turn. Uh, and going to give you a chance to pull ahead a little bit. Um, but hopefully, again, I, again, with this strategy, I think it was, in hindsight, not the greatest play. But uh, we'll hope for priority after your turn. Uh, but battle tactics. Um, I'm going to do monstrous takeover. Yep. So have uh, a monster be contesting objective that control. Yeah. And so I, yep. pretty clear where you're doing it right <laughs> in the center there. Yep. Yep. I mean, it would be cool to do it with Arky too, but uh, yeah. yeah it'll, it's a guarantee. It'll definitely be, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's de definitely there. Yeah. Um, and then for heroic actions, um, I will do heroic recovery of course. onto Arky yep. again, because um, that's just my best choice here. Yep. Um, so. Yep, five so that's under so he's good so he will here deal three d3 so only one just one this turn so up to 11 yep still got nine wounds on him still bracketed yep uh hopefully it's enough and then i'll just do heroic leadership with the fate master just in case i want to do something um but uh, he does hey, get he it. Gets it this time the turn i don't want it um but that's how it goes and i'll do an extra command point and then we'll get a bonus one as well and otherwise, jumping into Slaves of the Darkness, turn two. Yes, sir. Dorgar's Skullgorger head heals another two wounds from Archaon. Archaon then uses Dark Prophecy, learning who will have the next turn. The Sorcerer Lord starts things off by casting Demonic Power, but is unbound. 
Archaon cast Flaming Weapon, and then had Mystic Shield Unbound. The Sorcerer Lord on Manticore casts Wind of Chaos, but is unbound. The Sorcerer Lords use Oracular Visions on the Varen Guard and Archaon. In the movement phase, the Chaos Lord uses At the Double. At the end of the charge phase, Archaon stomps the Brimstorm Horrors, dealing three mortal wounds. At the start of the combat phase, the Chaos Lord uses Spurred by the Gods on Archaon. Archaon then eliminates the remaining Brimstone Horrors and also kills three Flamers of Zinch. The lone Brimstone Horror deals no damage and is then slain by the Chaos Sorcerer Lord. Scoring three points this turn for the objectives, the Slaves to Darkness also achieved their battle tactic for a total of 5 points this round. Okay, so <laughs> Slaves to Darkness turn 2 yep. um, went pretty well, especially because um, in your turn I was able to get some damage in on those pinks. Uh, which, Significant amount. Yeah, so, so that helped out a lot. Um, and then I was able to get, I didn't fail a charge roll for once. Um, so that was amazing. So yeah. Arky was able to actually fly over here, then wrap around, kill the brims, do a little bit of damage to the, the flamers. Yeah. I made an error here. Um, so I could only get my three inch attacks in the flamers just because of the way I had to pile yeah. in, but I was fighting twice. So what I should have done is fought, put everything into the brims. Yeah. They would get deleted, and then I could have piled you were, in. You were still tidying the flamers at three. Exactly. Yeah. In the end, yeah, you killed three flamers, mm -hmm. but removing them took you out of the three-inch range. Yeah. So you, yeah, didn't get that double pile in. Exactly. So a, a little bit of an error there. Um, for factors that will come up later, it won't be that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, but uh, besides that, objective wise, uh, Jordan was smart. <laughs> Luckily, that one brim was basically able to keep everyone here. Yep. But I would capture one, two, three, four, but only score for one, two, three. And it doesn't even matter the yeah, fourth because it's hold more. That's true. So you do hold two and hold more. So you get three points there. Yep. And then um, your battle tactic this round. Uh, that was keeping my monster uh, contesting an objective that I control. Yes, right. And so that, that was that guy right there. Yep. Uh, so that bring me up to scoring five for the turn. Oh. Um, and speaking about going into turns, I used a Archaon's cheater dice yep. to uh, roll and I got a six on that roll. Yep. So that means that um, if I roll a one to a three, Jordan has to go. Yep. There's no choice, Jordan would have to go. And if I roll a four to a six, I have to go. Yeah. So I will be going in this double turn here. Sounds um, good. But that also means that you get to do something yeah. cool. Yeah, so I'll get to burn an objective, but really with the turn here, that doesn't really matter. But I'll just burn this one for the sake of it. So take off an objective. And again. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then going into um, my battle tactic then for this round, I would yes. choose Conqueror, uh, which would be to capture objective in your territory. Yep. So I'm going to aim to get like those, those pinks horrors. out Yeah, yep. yep. for sure. Um, and then heroic actions yep. going into this turn. I am going to do... Yep. You know, I can't really heal unless I spike to heal enough... Um, to like get out of the, to, the bracket. To get out of my current bracket. So I'm going to do his finest hour. Okay, yeah, so that's a solid Ar one as well. Arky's doing his finest hour, so yep. plus one to save and plus one to wound. And then I will do heroic willpower because uh, I don't really have, I'll have three command points, don't really have use for any extra. So in this point, yeah, I'll just do, yeah get the extra unbind, try and unbind all five of your spells. Smart. And we'll jump into Slaves of Darkness, turn three. Sounds good. 
Dorgar Skullgorger head heals one wound from Archaon. The Sorcerer Lords use oracular visions on the Varengard and Archaon. The Chaos Sorcerer on Manticore casts Wind of Chaos, dealing six mortal wounds to the Blue Horrors. Archaon then fails to cast Flaming Weapon and has Mystic Shield unbound. The Sorcerer Lord casts Demonic Power, but is also unbound. At the end of the charge phase, Archaon fails his roar, and the Chaos Sorcerer on Manticore fails their stomp. At the start of the combat phase, the Chaos Lord uses Spurred by the Gods on Archaon. The Fate Master uses All Out Defense, but on Archaon's first activation, he kills the Fate Master and finishes off the Flamers. The Pink Horrors then deal one wound to the Chaos Knights. Attacking again, Archaon outright slays Kairos with the Slayer of Kings. The Sorcerer Lord on Manticore deals six wounds to the Horrors. Rounding out combat, the Varengard and Chaos Knights deal 38 wounds to the Pink Horrors. Both units of Horrors run from Battleshock. The host of the Everchosen proves Ascendant, scoring another 5 points after this dominant turn. All right, slave to darkness. Bottom of, uh, or sorry, top of turn top three. Top of three. Yeah. Um, so basically, between those two turns and that double, that was everything that I really needed to have happen. Um, Jordan burned this one, um, but it didn't matter too too much to me for scoring. You hold two, you hold more. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I basically just moved up, uh, wiped those pinks that were there, wiped the blues that were there. Um, and then Arky with his double pylon was able to clear the uh, the three flamers, uh, the Fate Master, and then actually with Kairos for the yep. first time ever when it actually meant something, I got him with Slayer of Kings. Yes, so yeah, that, that was, was huge. That was really cool. So uh, I get my battle tactic, which was to conquer, which take an objective yep. which I didn't control there. Uh, so once again, I do control that one, um, but I wouldn't necessarily get the points for it then, but I yeah. would get points for this one here, this one here, and since I yeah. captured that one in my yeah, other turn, So it's hold two or more, and you hold more than I yeah. do, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that'd be another five points for me in yes, this sir. round. And little opportunity, no opportunity to come back in this one. Uh, so I'll just jump right into the recap in terms of uh, just talking about the game and, uh, and whatnot. I guess for me, the two big things obviously were, one, you know, over not overestimating the damage but relying on averages um and that's just a big risk in and of itself right if you're relying on a 50 percent average you're going to get it half the time and you want the other half the time uh so not getting the damage output on archeon in hindsight obviously just target allocation should have been everywhere else and just kept throwing units of horrors in mm -hmm. you know archeon's uh way not letting him double pile in you know, stuff like that. I could have been allowing you to get all your casts and buffing off on him and just generating, you know, more units to keep throwing yeah. in his way. Uh, so obviously in hindsight, the first game with the army, lots to learn always. Um, and it's always the, the greatest question, right? Do you go after the big monster who's nearly unkillable, yeah. but if you ignore him, he's going to start destroying stuff, yeah. especially on these smaller boards now. Or do you try to target the other stuff and then exactly. hope it sorts itself out? And as we saw here, so many times it is just you deal with everything else. Archeon is only able to be in one place. And if you mm -hmm. can keep tying him up with, you know, chaff, he's, he's wasted. Otherwise, though, it was fun to play Zinch. Doing Zinchian things with, you know, Kairos' ability and, you know, the spell casting. And obviously, well, 
the flamers didn't do what I wanted them to do in terms of output. They were still doing decent damage, right? Mm -hmm. you know, seven, eight wounds a turn to Archeon is- On is, a two up save. Exactly. Like, what, like technically like a plus one save. Yeah, so, because like, that's... exactly, he had plus two, so he counteracted my one rend. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's big and even using all our defense, right? When I had the exalted flamer and, so it wasn't, you know, again, that would have been tearing through other stuff. I would, we'll have to play this game again sometime <laughs> yeah. now, you know, that I have a play under my belt with them. Just to give a true look at this game, obviously my, my strategy here was in hindsight, super poor of trying to go for Archeon, didn't pay off and just led to this. Whereas if, you know, turn two, I had of taking out Archeon, completely different, different story. But yeah. again, that's not, wasn't necessarily reliable. And even my average, on average, I take him out, didn't even account for, you know, things like the healing and he's healing 2d3 around potentially. Uh, plus healing on my turn and mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that, so. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting to bring them back out. Um, we did get the fact this morning. Yeah. So sorry if we missed any small yeah. things that may have changed or any rule clarifications on some of the bag stuff or even just full out changes. Uh, we tried to look through it as best as we could. In the other minutes before <laughs> we were getting started. Yeah, so, um, so sorry if there was any confusion there, but uh, being this is my first uh, 3-0 game, yeah. And um, my first game, obviously, with Slaves to Darkness here. Losing the Oracular Vision was a change and definitely something to think about. Obviously, it's still very tanky. Uh, yeah. I can effectively make him a two-up whenever I want to. Yeah. Um, in most cases, unless the Ren starts getting up there. But even then, I still have ways to counteract that. Um, definitely changes uh, it up a bit for me. But going over kind of the what happened to the army in 3-0, um, not... Too many point hikes in most cases, yeah. which was very beneficial for me, obviously. Like, Knights went up 10, Varengard didn't go up at all. Uh, Sorcerer Lord went up 10, they went up Chaos, like 10, yeah. 5. Like, so Almost really not thing, yeah. too much. Um, so I think that puts Slaves in a strong uh, position, especially me and Jordan were talking about this earlier. Um, a very common thing was to have a bunch of Marauders. You'd have at least like 240 blocks of Marauders yeah. going on. Uh, you guys can probably tell from the battle reports I've been on, I don't like horde models mm -hmm. at all. And so painting up 80 Marauders, especially old sculpts and building them did not entertain me. And that's where we took the biggest hit. Yeah. Um, so I got to really avoid that completely. So uh, the changes to Slaves to Darkness were basically all relatively beneficial for me. So I'm, I'm excited to see them in yeah. 3.0 going forward. Nice, yeah, no, they definitely are one of the armies that you know, came out well, I think. Zinch, like, lost chain shows, obviously, I think, Otherwise, though, it's like the Flamers still deal a ton of damage. Now, again, if I was going into other things, we would have seen more of that. Um, but, you know, for their points, they still, even though they went up a ton. They did. Um, yeah, Zinch got hit the yeah, hardest. Didn't got they? hit in points. Obviously, the Battalions is big. Yeah. But, I, like, despite this game today and this battle report, I think, like, Zinch and even a Turtle Confederation still has a lot of strength to it. I do. I, I think they definitely got knocked down from being, like, a obvious top three yeah. army. I think they're a lot more debatable for that spot now. But, but yeah, still, still strong st army. Still strong, for sure. Yeah. Not that I was able to show it here, but <laughs> we'll have some future games with them, uh, of course, at some point. But otherwise, we will wrap up the game here. Again, brutal one for Zinch. Uh, great win for Slaves to Darkness, so... Uh, exciting nonetheless seeing Archeon and Kairos on the table. Yeah, lots of fun. And having my first time playing Zinch was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this battle report, and we'll see you guys again soon. See you guys.